Hey, I'm Dan at Fanatic, and today we're very happy to have Revel in the house. This is Adam, the founder. They've came out, come out to visit us from Carbondale, Colorado. Uh, you guys made the trip out here to show us something that I'm pretty excited about, something you kind of told me about on the phone a few weeks ago, but now you have here in person, and that's a new line of wheels. Yep. Um, this is, you know, there's a number of companies out there, bike companies out there that have their own composite wheels to go along with the bikes, but this one is a little bit different, uh, and that is because it is made out of an entirely, well, not entirely, but a, a different material than we're used to. You want to jump in and elaborate on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump right in. So uh, we've been working on this product for almost a year now, and we have a really neat manufacturing partnership. Uh, for this line of wheels that we've created. And like you said, a lot of bike companies have made carbon wheels and put their name on them, and that's kind of what ours looks like on the outside, but there's a whole whole lot more to it um, mm -hmm. past that. So I got a wheel right here. We'll cut right to it and show you this thing. Uh, this is the Revel RW30 uh, 27.5 rim. We have this in a 29er as well, 30 mil internal. That, that's, that's the basics, but what gets pretty exciting is how the rim is made and what it's made out of, and it's not made out of carbon fiber as we all know it mm -hmm. in the bike world. Um, there is carbon fiber in here. The main thing that we did different with this wheel is instead of using uh, epoxy impregnated carbon fiber, mm -hmm. we uh, basically got rid of epoxy. Epoxy is the bad stuff. It makes it so uh, carbon fiber can't be recycled. Um, it's uh, not very environmentally friendly. Uh, it's not very health friendly when uh, you're sanding the rim and breathing in e epoxy. Okay. Um, and it's pretty tough to work with uh, for, for a lot of reasons we can get into. Yeah. We replaced all that bad epoxy with basically a nylon. Uh, it's pretty simple. And okay. that makes for a whole lot of really uh, cool properties from a strength to weight ratio, impact resistance, ride feel. Um, and what I'm super excited about is this rim is 100% recyclable. Cool. I'm really excited about the environmental aspects and how you recycle it. but before we dive into that, tell me real quick, does this change sort of the ride feel of the rim, you know, the characteristics of the actual ride as a, as a mountain biker? Yeah, so so as far as ride feel goes, um, it, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a little bit of like a, uh, I think the best word to describe it is kind of like a dance ride okay. feel. Um, it's kind of quiet because it's not at this brittle material. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not quite microscopic, but that nylon that's kind of in between all the carbon fibers uh, it just kind of has some flexibility to it. So when you smack into a rock, uh, it, it just feels a little bit damped and quiet, yeah. if that makes sense. A and little hard to describe. Probably, probably better able to kind of like move that energy yeah. through the rest of the rim. Yeah, cool. yeah. Um, so if you have a nice quiet bike, you know, quiet rims are, it, it is noticeably a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so, it's cool. Yeah. Um, obviously also, you know, these thin sidewalls that's what's taking most of the impact when you smash your your rim on a rock so to be able to move that energy away uh, i imagine well you have in fact found you've done a lot of testing on these and they are in fact quite a bit stronger and hold up quite a bit better. significantly and these rims are actually super light right. rims, so the impact resistance is is better at a significantly lower weight if we were to make these rims similar weights to some of the other rims on the market the impact strength would just be Roof. over the top through the roof really really good cool <laughs> now you mentioned sort of the environmental impact about all this recyclability you told me that on the phone I was initially a little skeptical there's plenty of materials out there that are technically recyclable yep. but that doesn't necessarily mean that they get recycled yep. what uh, you know Explain to me a little bit about what that means in this case. Totally, and we're, this is something like from the beginning of Revel, and we're not even a year old, I think we're 10 months old right now. We launched March 1st of last year. Uh, we've kind of had this commitment to sustainability. We mm -hmm. try to use recyclable packaging. We ship in reusable cases. Uh, we we you know, do what we can. This is the first super, super big leap forward in working towards creating products that have less of an environmental impact, and we're, I'm super excited about that. It's pretty cool to, to see. Say there's scrap material. Yep. Uh, you're, you're getting scrap material, mm -hmm. um, you know, prototypes that you need to scrap and stuff. What does the recycling process look like? And yeah, where does that happen? How does that happen? Totally. So, and we do have a lot of rims that we break in testing on 
harvest. And of course, traditionally those go right to the landfill. So we have a big old stockpile of, of, of rims that we've been saving up. Uh, we have a big chipper basically. So say you break your rim or we, we have one of these. Uh, what's neat about this rim too is there's no uh, no clear coat is needed. Okay. There's no paint. Yeah, um, I was noticing that. And it comes out of the mold looking just like this. It's super, super durable. And that's how the customer will get it too. That's how you'll get it. Cool. And so a lot of products that are recyclable, if you paint them, all of a sudden they become not recyclable or very cost prohibitive to then recycle. I hadn't considered that. Um, yeah, it's kind of something you don't think about. But yeah. um, And that's why we do just final decals on here. Peel the decals off. Uh, we have a big chipper with kind of this big opening for a rim. And you, you unbuild the wheel and you drop the rim in there. So this is something that you are doing in-house? Uh, we're our, our manufacturing partner in Southern Utah. Yeah. Um, that's the other thing. They're entirely made in America in Southern Utah. Cool. Um, it's all it's all at their facility. Okay, um, that's that's awesome. So you can actually verify like, yes, we will oh, recycle yeah. these. Absolutely, yeah. We're not we're throwing, gonna do it. not a single one of these rims will go in a landfill ever if we have anything to do with it. Okay, um, so you, you get your, this is new stuff, but say you have a piece of this goes in the chipper, gets chopped up. What do you then do with that? Yeah, uh, they get chopped up into about one inch chunks um, and then it gets melted down into a big block of, of material. Stuff. Um, of stuff, yeah. And then uh, that block uh, can be stamp formed, uh, it can be machined uh, just like a lot of other material. Um, it can't go back into being a rim again. The rim requires really long fibers, continuous long fibers. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's a perfect example of the yep. raw material there. So As when you, you cut that up in the chipper, yeah, you can no longer do that. You get shorter fibers, but it's still a very strong material that has a lot of um, uses. Uh, think of something like a stem or a seat collar or a chain guide or uh, anything traditionally made out of like, you know, uh, CNC aluminum. Yeah. You can kind of use your imagination. It's going to be used in helicopter parts or airplane parts, uh, Sweet. not necessarily just like okay. products. So this is uh, sort of a, some examples of the, of the material that's in that rim, the uh, sort of nylon infused uh, uh, carbon fiber. So uh, if this is a normal piece of, of uh, traditional pre-preg pre -pre epoxy pre-preg carbon, yeah. uh, when you bend it, it would you could make it break and you can see this is just super super flexible like even in that amount of bending yeah it would yeah and this is this is cured this is exactly what that what that rim is okay um so it's it's pretty neat this is the raw material so you can see uh you can see all the lines and um if this was uh raw epoxy pre-preg that was about to go into a standard thermoset rim uh any other carbon rim on the market it would be really sticky uh uh raw pre-preg is actually a pretty volatile material it has a shelf life of uh, depending on what it is around a month or so and you have to keep it refrigerated oh, wow. if it's not in a stable environment the properties can change um, and so there's a lot more kind of variation uh, that can go on with a normal carbon manufacturing process yeah our process is extremely automated this raw material has no uh, it doesn't expire it doesn't need to be refrigerated it's completely stable at uh, you know negative 40 degrees up to 120 degrees. So um, there's a much wider range of usability with the raw material. Um, and that makes it our manufacturing process much more controllable and consistent. It's extremely automated. So there's not workers hand, you know, grabbing a piece of this and putting it on mm -hmm. uh, on the rim mold. Um, it's all done uh, by machinery. And so there's the exact same amount of material goes into every single rim. There isn't a weight variation like there is with other carbon rims on the RNA carbon power cool. on the market, and that just helps us control everything a whole lot more. Yeah, so you're getting a really high quality rim every time. I know from all the custom wheel builds we do, building up rims goes differently depending on on the rim, yep. and poor quality rims are a lot harder to make into a strong wheel. Yep. Uh, so that transfers to the customer. Also, I hadn't considered that, I didn't know that pre-preg carbon had to be refrigerated. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so we've got your rim here. We've got this 27.5. You also have a 29 inch rim. These are sort of enduro, all aggressive, all mountain yep. application. Yep. 30 mil inner width. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the pricing on these. Yeah, so we're, we're actually pretty happy with the pricing. It's a very premium product that I think really checks a whole lot of boxes. It's not often you can get, you know, light, strong, recyclable, you know, they're, they're, it checks quite a few boxes. Yeah. So, uh, Retail pricing, uh, rims only are $700 each rim. Uh, complete wheels built up with Industry 9 1-1 hubs are 1975 
complete wheels built with Industry 9. Hydra hubs are $2,200. Cool. So. Tell me about the warranty real quick. Lifetime warranty. Lifetime warranty. Pretty much a no questions asked lifetime warranty. We also have a crash replacement if you drive your car over it. And it, area. if you do drive your car over it, send it back to you guys yep. and it gets recycled and turned into something new. We'll exactly. see what. Uh, lastly, yep. what is the room called? RW30, Rebel RW30. Cool. Um, we will also be getting these rims up into our visual wheel builder, uh, which has some other surprises coming along with it. But you can build these up too. Like Adam said, the Hydra hubs, the 1 1 hubs, Onyx hubs, DT240, whatever is your preference. Check those out in there. We'll be getting, I believe you said, a number of different colors. We custom will be offering options. custom colors. If you don't like the kind of chrome silver thing going on, we'll have a whole lot of custom so color can options coming up. Appreciate match it. those up to, to your custom build, your custom Rebel build that you're doing. Rebel or anything else. These wheels look good on any bike. Great. Well, this is all super cool. I have yet to ride these, but I believe I will be pretty soon, which I'm, Next I'm really day. excited about. <laughs> um, yeah, can't wait to let you guys know more about them. Thanks Sweet. for coming, Adam. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.